Good evening, good evening. Hope everyone is doing well. You'll have to give me just a second. I had something come up at the last second and kind of occupied my time. Hopefully everybody can hear me okay. I've got a couple running so I can still see feed and respond to questions. Uh, one more second here. I'm sorry to hold everything up. Uh, I think we are set. Hopefully everybody can hear me. I'm going to view it from another screen just because it's a lot easier. Uh, we are going to talk about managing your time because um, I got into a discussion with somebody, well, actually two people, and we went back and forth for a while. It was a nice, lively discussion. It wasn't anything bad or anything like that. I actually took some notes, and I wanted to bring some things up um, specifically about that. Um, and also, um, there's a couple other topics I'll be touching on. Uh, before we go into this too far, either uh, the Weebles video part two is up tomorrow. It's already done, ready to go. Um, I posted a preliminary copy on Patreon for those in Patreon. You already saw it yesterday. Um, there are some changes between that one and the final one, just FYI. Uh, sometimes it's hard to tell until it's been uploaded on certain things. So there are some changes that have been done. Um, but it will be ready. Uh, it's, it is ready, I should say. It will be up tomorrow, part two. I have another video um, in Patreon as well that just went up like 10 minutes before this show. It's a long one, too. It's like 45 minutes or something. It's pretty long. That's just one part of the one that's going up, um, too. Um, I'm live tomorrow for those in Patreon. I do see quite a few people already. Uh, I see Kathy there for sure. I see Daryl and quite a few other ones. Um, so just for those in Patreon at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time tomorrow, I will be live. Um, as always, I've got a few hours marked off for that. I've got topics. Uh, there will be a store review in that at the end of it. Um, the last half or the last 30 minutes or so will be a store review too. Um, let me pop and see who's on here. And then we're going to go right into time management. Again, I was in a long discussion for like 35, 40 minutes, and that's long for me on the phone type. Um, and it was a group discussion, so there was three of us. But um, hey, Duncan, how are you doing? Uh, lots of page errors. Uh, yes, I had seen one that I hadn't seen before. It actually crashed out on me sending an offer. I send a lot of offers sometimes. I had sent out 116 um, like two hours ago. And out of those, I got like five errors. Maybe that doesn't sound like a huge lot, but that's like 3% or somewhere in that range. That's a pretty good percentage of errors for something. It should be almost nil. Um, on other platforms and stuff I'm on, I don't have errors popping up, especially when I'm listing something. Now, if I'm jumping the gun on like Amazon sometimes and I'm selling a like item or something, I've sometimes I've seen an error once or twice, but it's usually me clicking really quick. Um, and if I don't do that, I wait a second or so, it, it doesn't do that. But yeah, I've heard uh, quite a few complaints in the beginning on managed payments, but in all honesty, for, for sales wise, for easeability and everything else, and for those just starting off, I don't want to just look at it from my point of view. I, I, to me, it's a money grab. Just, I'll just be straight out. It's a money grab in my book. No other way to see it whatsoever. Um, but, but it will help those new. It will help a lot of folks who don't save money, and you know, at the end of the month, sometimes their bill can be horrendous. It'll adjust that and take care of it right off the bat. So all you're worrying about is your main listings. They did add for those in promoted listings after July 30th, I think is the date that they quoted to me. The amount of listings I get will be 25,000 more. If it stays that way, I'll be okay with that. At least they gave us something extra. That's a couple hundred bucks for me, minimum, a month extra, just given to me if they're going to do, you know, up the, the quantity of free listings and things like that. Um, it's a big deal to me if that's the case. If they keep them above and beyond what we've been getting and stuff like that, and I'm still getting the free listings and all, for a considerable length of time, it does save me money. So, again, I can't complain. But I've talked to now, you know, we're on managed payments on one. I, I deal with people who are on managed payments. I've in-depth talked to sellers who do decent volume that have been on managed payments since last year. 
um, way last year. So I've talked to a bunch of people now. In, in the usability, the amount of customers they get, they do see an increase seasonal-wise, of course, but an increase in, in actual sales. A lot of them seems to be from payments other than PayPal. You know, I know there's a lot of people that have had issues with PayPal. When PayPal was, was first around and they first split off eBay, there was a lot of complaints. There was a lot of complaints when PayPal came in to begin with. I was never one of those. We actually made quite a bit of money off of PayPal with stocks when they split up. So I, I can't complain. PayPal saved my back a couple of times when somebody got my card number from somewhere. Now, I don't use my PayPal card anymore at all, so I don't really have that issue. But you, somebody can steal your information. And that's happened to us. PayPal caught it like real quick. I mean, within an hour or so of it happening based on location and things like that. Somebody had used it in Oregon. So... It was um, the state, not not a city or anything like that for those in the local area. There is an Oregon, Ohio, not too far away. Um, so I'm not really upset with PayPal. I don't have an issue. I don't really care that I have to get numbers from PayPal and numbers from, from eBay. It doesn't bother me. It's just a column in a spreadsheet. I just... Uh, download the um, the CF, uh, CSV file from PayPal. It's imported. It's got every single thing in there. It takes a second. I can auto sum at the bottom. I can link that to a, a, a box in another or a cell in another file. So everything pulls together. It's on one. It doesn't matter to me. Um, I will probably pay more with managed payments. If I get more listings out of it, I can tolerate. I'm not going to throw a big stink. Again, this is the way it's going. You, you have to think about the whole aspect of this as a business uh, thought. You know, as a business thought, I make too much money to consider, hey, I'm just going to stop doing it because of that. Yeah, I know people say your social security number and all this stuff. I've got a business license. I'm, you know, registered here. I'm registered there. My numbers are everywhere in the government. There's nothing I can do about it. I'm not trying to hide it. You know, I pay my taxes. I do what I'm supposed to do. So, I'm not going to worry about that. It's already out there. It's nothing you can do about it. You have to supply it for YouTube when you do, you know, um, the fees and when you get, um, you know, promoted and you get the, the ads and all that. You, you got to do it for a lot of stuff. If you go down and get a business account, you got to supply all kinds of stuff there. If, if you sign any kind of business contract, I'm going to have to supply certain numbers, my insurance company. Um, you know, business uh, insurance and all that kind of stuff. It, it, everybody has it at some point. You know, my rep at the bank, you know, deals with certain things. I've got other reps like my accountants, and we've got several accountants. You, you can't avoid it when you get big enough. Let's just put it that way. So if, if you're worried about exposing a number like that, I can you know, probably buy someone's number if I wanted to off the dark web. I could just hop on tour any day of the week and you can buy those things. So I'm, I'm not making light of that fact, but as a business decision, I, I can't avoid doing this. It, it wouldn't be practical, wouldn't be monetarily wise to me at all. Again, eBay's like just under half of what we do is, is coming from eBay these days. It used to be different, it used to be all eBay, but you know, things change, you know, and in whether eBay did something or not, I've never jumped ship or done something because of my feelings towards eBay management. Uh, again, I separate those aspects of it versus the business aspect. Pros and cons of being on eBay. Pros and cons I do of everything. And we're going to talk about pros and cons and listing costs, um, true listing costs, not you know some number off of just eBay. There's more to listing costs than that. We're going to get into that in just a few minutes here. But, but in all honesty, I'm okay with the prospect of managed payments. That's what I got with Amazon. What's the difference? Amazon's got all my numbers. I've never had an issue in all these years with Amazon. You know, I do pull, you know, credit reports occasionally or, or have a, a free look where it's not going to ding my, my credit. So, I mean, I, I keep up with that stuff. You know, we've got business protection that protects for loss from people stealing stuff like that, too. I've got a BOP, you know. If you want to get bigger, you're going to have to supply some of this information. Once you hit some thresholds, you'll have to supply it. Once you've purchased or, or paid somebody over a certain amount, those, those numbers come into play too, no matter what. We buy things, you know, from one person for five, ten thousand dollars $10,000 at times. Those are all reported transactions. You've got to file. I've got to put in social security numbers. All that stuff just to purchase something for a business expense for certain dollar amounts. And, and that's 
just the way that the business is. So if, if you do want to grow, you're going to have to give some of that information out. I, you know, I obviously you, everybody knows that I do have issues with the people that run eBay and have run eBay. And everybody pretty much who watches the channels knows why. But again, that doesn't that's that's a, a personal issue in my opinion based on it obviously they've they've done some stuff that may have been discretionary towards a business but as a business thought the site is good the site i make good money on i sell stuff for good money there where i couldn't sell it somewhere else for that same money again other sites i sell stuff for more than i do on ebay but ebay for a lot of the items that i sell is the best place to sell it you know plain and simple that that's about it you know it plain and simple that's that's it that's my bottom line on you know where we go from there so anyway we'll come back to that in just a few minutes here let's run through who's here and what's going on yeah um many complained about managed payments many said their sales stopped as soon as they were signed up i i haven't heard that and i haven't seen that personally either you know it, it depends on what you sell it depends on the season sales can just drop depending on what you're selling at any point if you're selling certain items you know there's no cause and effect proof there just because you do one thing doesn't mean that something happening is related to that it could just literally be one of those other factors so uh, unless i can can actually qualify that yeah that's happening i'm not gonna i'm not gonna look at that i'm gonna figure out how to fix the sales and not you know correlate the two together there's no because i hear stuff like that a lot whoever watches everybody who's watched me for any time i get tons of questions i don't have any time whatsoever to answer like 90 percent of my business is the majority of it is selling and stuff so i mean i don't i don't spend a lot of time with the questions i don't have that time you know, my business is where the majority of my, my time goes to, you know, company business investment time-wise. So, um, anyway, let's let's go back here. Yeah, and Duncan, yeah, the Social Security numbers. The same same basic principle, as I said, you got to give it for so much stuff these days. You know, if you do want to be big, you're, you're going to have to give out some information. You're going to you're going to be cutting off income potential, good income potential. So I just I would rather just give out the number and be done with it. Again, we've signed up. All of our eBay is signed up for managed payments. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, I, for with with eBay too. We've been getting constant phone call messages about you know this and that on managed payments. Even though we're signed up, it says you need to sign up, and it's giving me warnings. I've already signed up. I even got a confirmation letter, so I, I don't understand how they can't figure that out with their system. But you know, you know they are behind. We we can't argue that at all. Regina, how are you doing this evening? Welcome, welcome. Yeah, managed payments has another round going at the end of the year, so I think December is the, the next one. I, I'm thankful that they um, did ours in this quarter. I, I don't want to wait to to the last quarter like they usually do on stuff. I'd rather get it done now when I don't have as much concern over it, so I'll know what's going on by the time third and fourth quarter rolls through here. So, uh, let's see here, Pink Sky. If you had PayPal, you had to give them your yeah. Well, exactly, same basic thing. It's for verification, from what I understand, with, with the Social Security number. You do have to supply it. I don't think the bank's technically allowed to give you a Social Security number, but since PayPal handles you know, the money transfers, I think they are required to. It's a, um, what is it? Uh, it's some kind of federal regulation for banking is what it is. Um, I, I, I saw the whole stature one before and actually read technically why certain information is given. I questioned that once before, too, way back in the day. There, it's it's a banking regulation. FC. I don't remember the, the the branch that's doing it, but it's a banking regulation. Regina, I think most people just don't like change to a system they're comfortable and familiar with, but some fail to see that change is the only constant in the universe. Yeah, it's going to change. I don't care what you say. If you, I did a video just the other day, and I literally have. 20 uh, landing pages of eBay. It's 22 landing pages from 1998 all the way through today. So you can see the changes as the pages progressed and what was included, what wasn't, how many quantity of things. Like in 98, I think we had th uh, 32 or some odd thousand 
listings and antiques, and that was it on all of eBay on antique section. The whole categories were different. Things change every single year. There's something different on that landing page. Um, if you're interested in seeing it, I got a video up from just a few days ago about that. But hey, Marty, how are you doing this evening? Good to have you on on the 21st. So far, so good. Whole bunch of eBay page errors, though. E eBay page errors. If I'm on eBay, I see them constantly these days. I mean, three to five percent of any click I do seems to be a page error, and that's pretty high odds. Three to five percent. Mind you, I might do hundreds and hundreds of clicks compared to many people, um, and we're here. We're not sourcing like a lot of other people, so that's you know all day long, eight, ten, twelve hour days of just clicking across stuff just to list or to type or something the ones that are the worst are the ones that um you're ready to list it you click um list item or something and gives it the error you got to go back and see if it listed it if it didn't listen you got to type all that back in you can't just reload the page the page is gone the, the new page the one you just should have finished I believe you still keep PayPal as a Duncan if you directly list on an international eBay site like I do. I list on eBay UK, but don't live there. Don't think I'll get managed payments. I don't think the managed payments is... I think it's the same way in UK. I talked to somebody from the UK the other day about that. When they roll those out, they're going to stagger them too, so they'll be every quarter or however they do it. I know there's less people on the UK side. I had a listing, I mean... Um, a, pay, a printout that I had uh, that listed the amount of users per eBay site. Um, and I know it was less, much less than, than the U.S. site. U.S. site obviously was the first. I think they've got, what, 11 sites now? I think maybe 12. I, I don't keep up on that. I only look at like five or six other country eBay sites for things that we collect and stuff like that. But uh, Also, I thought eBay had seller's backs with late shipments, but buyers are still opening cases and getting their money back from multiple sellers. Yeah, I had one uh, probably the beginning of all this going on, and I ended up refunding him. And once you refund him, the, the case is done and you have no access. You can't send the guy a bill. So the item showed up, and I argue that with eBay. The item showed up after I gave the guy his money back. Now, the, the eBay standard, and this is a stated standard. It's been like this forever, so nothing that I'm upset with at all. But the eBay standard is if there's no tracking information for more than 10 days. So on the morning of the 11th day that there's no updates on the tracking that you supply to eBay from the post office, the buyer can physically open a case. Now, don't ever open it. Like, let's say you're missing something. Don't ever open a case before it goes past that 10 days. If you open a case in the first uh, 10 days, what happens is they get another 10 days if you do that. So never, ever, ever, ever open a case if you're expecting something until the 11th day. Make sure it's past 10 full days, 10 24-hour days. I, I promise you that that will happen. It's happened to us once before when, when something went haywire. So don't ever, 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 ever open a case in less than 10 days. Again, it will kick you in the butt. You'll have to wait 20 days just to have anything seen or do anything with it. But after that 10 days, that buyer can open up a case. They're not turning that off is all that means. So when somebody says they're not getting it, eBay you know, is still allowing that sort of thing to happen if the buyer seems to be upset from what it looks like to me. And again, if the buyer calls, they might get a no, you can't do that, or you need to wait, or whatever else from 10 people. The 11th person at working at eBay may not have a clue like we see all the time and tell them, yeah, we'll go ahead and do that for you. You know, a, a big joke, and it's been a joke for, for years, you know, at least the last, say, eight or ten years that we've been on eBay. If you don't like the answer, just call back and talk to somebody else because depending on who you talk to, your answers are always different. You know, that's that's just the results I get. Amazon, it's way different. Amazon, they tell you something. I've never had them go back, for me anyway, and have it be a different answer or response from anybody else. You know, I can, I can say a lot of people say they have complaints about... Um, Amazon, but honestly, other than the the issues, the long drawn out issues I had with the Richard Pryor estate, the actor Richard Pryor, I haven't had any issues really. And, and technically, it was Richard Pryor's estate that pressed the issue, and Amazon actually came in and sided with us at the end of it. So you know, I, I really can't complain. It's it's always eBay that I have the issues with, in all honesty. Again, I'm it's not a deterrent to sell. It's just frustration. Um, so we all get frustrated with stuff like that. So anyway, 
Um, if you haven't hit the like button, I know I always forget to say that. I got 138 people on right now. We got 26 likes. We're going to delve into... Um, some questions and some comments again about the conversation I had earlier about time and what it costs you to list on just an item, just a single item here. We'll shut those out in just a few more minutes. Hey, Carl, uh, I think I actually mentioned you in, in the uh, Patreon video that was up uh, that just went up today. So, Real Linus, how are you doing this evening? And I do see Strictly Kathy. How are you doing, Kathy? I have some, uh, for those in Australia, um, Duncan being one of them, I do have some Australian items I'm going to have in a video very uh, shortly. Something, some interesting ones, some early ones, uh, a little mix of things on a uh, video on foreign items that we do sell as well, too. So keep an eye out for that one. I think you'll find it interesting. You may have not even seen some of the items I'll be showing um, in the video locally, even. They're, they're fairly scarce. Um, I happened to get lucky the other day with some items. Hey, Bob, how are you doing, Bob? Um, Jilly, if you are out there too, um, I will get a box and uh, a price on the shipping for that, uh, just FYI. I did see that. I don't know if I'll have a chance to go back in, but I'll send you a message tomorrow once I get the box. Um, it's going to be huge. I think it's going to weigh like 60 pounds. It'll probably be sent to you um, FedEx or UPS, just FYI. Uh, where are we at? Gail, how are you doing this evening? Good evening as well. Unicorns don't lie. Is it allowed to retain your eBay customer address to send advertisement to later like for um, my Shopify? You're not, I don't think the, the, the rule, I think it says you're not allowed to use or store information in that aspect. But if it's going through another service that you're not, let's say I'm shipping and paying through another service. I'm not getting the information technically from eBay. Now, I'm not going to draw straws, and that's not technically what I'm doing. But if you send out and fill out a postcard as a thank you the day you're sending out the items separately, you know, I don't see as there can be anything wrong with that because you're thanking them for the purchase that you are sending out right then. I'm just going to throw that out there. You take it as you wish. There is policies on what you do with your customer's information. Now, as a business... Um, there might be an argument with eBay saying, no, you shouldn't be able to do something like that and, and stuff like that. As a business, companies and businesses, it's a routine to send out a thank you for a purchase. So you're not tying in advertisements in the package. And I know people do that, and I know things like that happen all the time. I also heard, you know, that eBay buys people's items under, you know, uh, an oddball name and then sees what you do, too. You know, I've heard stories of that. I haven't seen one personally so i don't know if that's true or not i'm not trying to start some oddball rumor but i've been told that by a couple of people in the past that ebay contacted them and said you're not allowed to do this and they dung them and stuff like that again i don't know if that's true i, I never saw they never could produce any physical um like an email or something that that showed it you know i'm going by word of mouth from a couple different people who don't know each other you know, if they didn't know each other, or if they knew each other, I, I probably wouldn't hold any faith in what that was said, just personally. I don't I don't try to go on hearsay. I always like to try and see a copy or something. Many of the, the stuff that I talk about, people send me literally copies um, of stuff so I can verify that, hey, that's what's going on. Like the, it's not you, it's us error. I see it myself, so I don't even need to get a copy of any of those, so. I would just recommend Unicorns Don't Lie to read your user agreement. I don't see anything wrong, though, with sending out a card for a thank you. Um, people stick thank you cards in the packet. Um, like, we get Weebles, and I do see thank you cards a lot, and check this out and check that out. Now, technically, by what eBay says, that's not allowed. In the day and age, though, that we're in... It's a necessity for a business to send out something, whether it be physical or otherwise. So, you know, you can get services and things like that, too. Now, with Shopify, you own, you know, you, you the information is yours. They're your own personal customers. So the whole point is to, to breach them from, not breach them, I guess that's a bad term, but to use your contacts through Shopify to keep the, the regular customers coming back, you know, constantly. Now, I've got a rapport with, with people beyond eBay, quite a few of my regular customers. Some of them, uh, the ones that are like working at universities and stuff like that who buy historical items for studies, for books and things like that, I've got personal information from them. So, 
you know, that's all it takes is to get a few coming in and then word of mouth and things like that too. There's things you can do um, to do that. We're going to pay for advertisement. Literally, we're paying for an advertisement um, through Google once we open our Shopify. I'm going to do everything in my power to push that up. You know, so when someone does a search on Google, um, I'm going to have some some sway in that. You know, I'm going to gear it. I'm going to target it and the whole works. I will probably do some on Facebook as well, too. I'm just throwing that out there. That's that's what you do these days. You're going to have to sink some money into it in my book to get it going quicker. You take it how you want. But I, I am not, uh, you know, against advertising. I've done it before for certain things. and I, I had no problem. And for the return on my investment, it was well worth 10 or 15 percent of my sales to advertise. I mean, it was stuff I wouldn't have sold otherwise. I know maybe new people or if you don't have a ton of stuff, it may not be wise or practical to do that. But from my standpoint with volume and everything else going around with it, I, I know IT enough. I know the basics. I, I handled marketing and management for you know, restaurants I ran and I did you know TV commercials and radio commercials and we did live shoots. I, I did all that stuff. I mean, I did the internet for it, when, when the limited internet back then when I was doing it. So I, I'm not a, a, against any of that. I recommend it for people that are bigger and have some niches. Uh, again, because if you're in a niche and you're selling in a niche, you're not just going to sell on one site, chances are, uh, especially these days. So, you know, you, you've got you've got ways to target people that would be of interest to the items that you're looking for. You know, through a Google search. They're going to search for items through Google. You know, Google's going to have that information and stuff. So that's why... I feel, and, and from what I've personally seen from people that I know that, that have Shopify and paid for advertisements and done this and done that, it, it works. You know, I, I, I can't speak enough about that whole thing of it. So don't just rely on sending out cards and notices or something like that. Email, same thing. You know, there, there's an overall way to draw people in as well, too. Ranking high on a Google search with your own stuff from your own site is, is a Best play, uh, best case scenario for me. That's that's the end end result there. Not trying to skirt the the, the question there at all, but um, there's a little more involved in it than just saying, hey, let's send cards out through through information. You you got to do it wise and smart. Um, again, as long as you're not breaking word for word what the policy says, you should be in the clear. Uh, hopefully that does help. Hey Carol, how are you doing? Hey, Annie, how's Annie doing this evening? I'm sorry, I've been getting messages all day over another thing going on. Uh, and I just want to make sure that... We've got some deals going on behind the scenes, I'll just state that. Um, okay, sorry about that. We've got some deals going on. So, always something going on behind the scenes here. We're going to pivot in just a second here to um, conversation on time. Again, if you haven't hit the like button, I got 141 people and 45 likes. I love to get to 100. does boost the channel before we go off the air tonight. Um, patrons, as I do see quite a few patrons, there is a long video that I just posted today on paper, photos, postcards. Um, it's a two-parter, so all together I think it's over two hours for the parts that are coming up. Uh, live tomorrow as well, too. Video's already done for YouTube for tomorrow. Um, it's something that's going to help you that most people aren't aware of. It's something eBay's changed and done, and we will go into that tomorrow as well. Um, my dog's down here. I'm sorry. <clears throat> Joan, how are you doing this evening? Central New Jersey, PA, waiting for a storm. We had a pretty good storm the other day. I'm still actually, we had some water roll in from a patio door, and I am still trying to dry that up. I had to pull up the carpeting and the whole works. Uh, hey, Karen, how's Karen doing this evening? Uh, we had the storm in Boston a bit ago, so it's heading that way. Yeah, we've had quite a few storms lately. And there's Daryl, as I said. Welcome, Daryl. Amazon Seller 99, how are you doing this evening? Haven't seen you in a little while. Eduardo, well, welcome to the live show. Good to see you in here as well. New videos, as I said, are up. Paper Junking, welcome, Grand Canyon, Arizona. I'd love to take the family there one day. Barlight Broker, how are you doing? Uh, let's see, you're not feeling good about eBay lying about managed payments, saying you'd not be able to list items until you sign up. 
they've said that pretty much from the start. Um, I, I don't know what, you, what you're looking at, but from the start, there has been a notice stating that it would uh, could affect your abilities to sell on the platform if you don't sign up. I don't think that's a lie in my book. Um, I haven't seen anything to the contrary. And from the very beginning last year, I was understood that everybody would be on it. There wouldn't be any exceptions or anything else like that. Um, Again, I know for those who don't sign up, they did send out a warning, and the phone calls they've been stating will say you will not be able to list new items until you sign up. So I do believe that's what you're talking about. But again, from the start, from the start, again, I, anybody who watches knows I'm not a big defender of eBay's management. But from the start, I was under the impression you would not be able to even sell at all on the site if you don't sign up. So I, I don't have any discrepancies with that in my book. Again, I'm not sure which site you're on. You may be on a foreign site as well. Um, are you a collector? Good evening. Good evening. Yeah, I haven't enjoyed this. I've been inside a lot working, so I haven't even got to see the summer very much. Um, we wanted to go walking this morning, but um, man, I couldn't sleep last night. I was up till three, and didn't didn't work out very well. Uh, let's see here. RK Treasure Center. Good evening. Hey, Black Crystal Dice. Greetings to you as well. Joe Farinelli, how are you doing? Uh, if you didn't get the offer, you're probably just in the next group. By the end of the year, they want to have the majority of all sellers on it. They've done it in groups every three months from what I see. They've been pushing it or every six months. I'm not sure the time frame, but I know that they're doing it in groups. It's not all just done at once so they can stagger through plus they've got to um have extra staff to run through when a uh, bank account won't work or something like that now if you're having issues with getting your bank account to link up there is a option on there and i'm not sure exactly where it was but there's an option that you can click on and you can directly sign into your bank account through ebay i know people say ah oh, don't do that um, but you basically do that, you know, with PayPal and things like that already. So it's already basically tied. But once you do it that way, they automatically have the correct information. It should clear up any problem from what I see. And I've had several people tell me that same thing. I've seen the page. I just don't have the, the link to it directly. Now, you could probably get to that just straight through Google if, if that's what you're interested in. Um, eBay, uh, direct bank link, manage payments. If you type in something along that line, I bet you'll find that link. And it'll fix any of those errors if you get the error message back. I'm 100% straight, ready to go. They've already given me a date. I think the 30th is when mine starts. So, you know, I'm fine. I'm going to roll it and see. Again, we are on. We have several stores. The other store doesn't have any issues, hasn't had any issues. I investigated. I talked. I don't have a choice anyway, but I did look into everything. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm sticking with it. You know, I've stuck with it through all this time. The site, again, is a good site. People running it may not be the right people for the position in my book you know i'm not going to go back into that i'm just trying to move on with my business here my business includes ebay again almost half of my business at this point i'm no way going to be smart by cutting off ebay as my as you know 48 or whatever percent of my income is I, i'm not going to do that you know morally i'm not doing anything wrong i'm following my moral guidelines you know the individuals who did stuff are individuals. I, I literally can't say as a company whole, let's go do something to somebody. I don't see that. I see individuals, and a lot of them, and many that aren't involved, unfortunately, in the cases. But anyway. Uh, hey, Wubba Lubba Dubba. How are you doing this evening? Disney fan, uh, Marty. Uh, tons of errors when processing bulk edits. I don't... I haven't done a bulk edit in a little while, so I'll have to look into that. But I've been doing a lot just through Inkfrog, though, too. Yeah, Webba Lebba Dubba, the increase in listings is only in certain categories, and it's always been collectibles. Like the free listings I get are collectibles. This is collectibles. That's collectibles. So it's always including collectibles, and that's the majority of what I'm fine with. Um, I just won't list other things on there until something else sells or something, if need be. But most of my items are in the collectibles category. I did see that too, though, but thank you for, for pointing that out. Uh, Annie, FYI, the three dots don't click through to people's channels on YouTube anymore. I did not know that. 
Huh, didn't know that. You used to be able to do that. Yes, and that's one of the ways I've even told other people to do it. Well, thanks for that. I had no clue. Go to channel. Yeah, I don't know if I'll mess with... Um, I don't go to many channels other than the ones I already deal with. Um, yeah, Kathy, same thing. It's faster to do individual edits rather than fix errors on bulk edits. Again, I haven't done a bulk edit in probably a week or more, so um, maybe I'll just do one tomorrow just to see what's going on with that. Hey, Ben. Hey, Ben Rowe. How are you doing this evening? Going through those free records, I'd imagine, already. Uh, where are we at? Where are we at? Joe, I'm reading a lot of people never got it. I'm still uh, listening and using PayPal. Yeah, it, again, it's it's in stages, so I wouldn't worry about that at all. <clears throat> RK Treasure Center. I see a lot of uh, eBay ads on TV now. They're on radio, TV, Google. They're in my email box. Again, this is a concerted effort. They're they're trying to push it out. Again, they're trying to combat the negative uh, federal cases and stuff like that too. This is a marketing. It's again, it's all tied to marketing. You know, they're they're desperate. I think at this point, you got to spend money to make money. And if they're not willing to invest in stuff like that, you know, they might as well just give up. You know, Amazon's all over the place. You know, and the, the only way you're going to anywhere get near that is to do these advertisements. I don't know if they're doing the right type. You know, I don't pay attention to advertisements. Most of them are turned off through ad blocker on my, my PC, so I don't even see them. I had to turn them on the other day just to see some, you know. Or turn them off, I should say, so I could see them. Sorry. Now, eBay, you can still call if you have an anchor store, just FYI. I've had phone service. There was only like a 10-day time frame I did not have phone service. Um, most of the time, I usually just send a eBay for business. You know, they're not very helpful half the time, but, you know, neither is the phone sometimes either. So, But I still have the ability to call. If you have an anchor store or above or the enterprise, you can call them anytime you want. They just route the phone calls to a employee's personal um home phone number. That's what happens with that. L let's hop over um, to uh, time management for just a few minutes here. <clears throat> now, I had a conversation. We'll, we'll throw out the conversation here. And, and pay attention. Listen to this for a minute here because <clears throat> this is... Excuse me. Let me get a drink before we go into the conversation. <clears throat> conversation was on the cost to list an item. The total cost. Again, we're talking time and all that kind of stuff in there. Mind you, for me, it's if I'm, it's included in my free listings, it's like two cents per listing. Again, that's equated to my monthly fee. If it's over the initial listings that I get for free, it's five cents to list. So five cents an item is the, the paid amount that I pay for that listing to be posted live on, on eBay. Now, some folks, we talked about the true, true nature of, of the fees. Some people are spending like three fifty for the initial list to get an item up. Now, why why is a three fifty even a number? Where's that coming from? The time invested in listing that time is money. So they've equated, and again, these are people who are more who are in the lines of how I think on stuff. Because again, I, I did charts. I I plot it all out. When somebody runs a shift for me, like today, I see how many items they list an hour. I, I got an average for the week. I got an average per the employee. And you can kind of figure out how many, how much it costs you man hour wise to list something. So you, you've got to include that into your, your listing. Now, when I decide on what we sell and whether I pass on stuff or don't pass on stuff, I, I've got that pros and cons sheet. I'm not lying about that. There's a video I got literally talking about pros and cons. That's literally what I do. So pros and cons. A con for listing many items is the time it takes to list those items. Clothing costs me more money for labor time. Now, obviously, everybody doesn't have employees. I talk to people who have employees these days. I talk to people who don't. I've talked to people who have way more employees than me and have a bigger business than me, but they don't know certain things. So we each help each other out. The, the, the point of it is, though, if it's just you, you've got to weigh the time, you know, your energy, your time, your, your, your listing ex um, hourly wise, your, your cost of doing business for your labor, I guess it would be the, the thing. For you, if you're all by yourself, you're, you're not sourcing, you've got to list items. You only can list, say, four or five items an hour because of photograph time, measurements, 
um, listing. Let's say it's a complex item and you got to have 12 photos. You've got to take them. You've got to get it set up. You got to turn it around. If it's clothing, you've got to measure it. There's, there's all kinds of other factors in there. So if you're listing only four or five an hour and you're not able to source because you've got a list to get the income coming in, it might be wiser for you to do pros and cons and see how much time you are blowing week by week on doing stuff like that. It may be more practical to take something that may make a little less money, but you can list twice as many of them. I mean, that's again, everybody sees I list a lot of stuff. I've got massive tens of thousands of listings, not just one store. We've got many stores across the net. So the only way it's successful is the ability to list them cheaply. The cheaply just doesn't mean that five or two cents that I pay to list, but it means cheaply by, again, I pay people to list most of my stuff. So it's, it's how cheap I can get the items listed. If I'm listing paper, I can list up to 30 items. Most anybody that works here can list up to 30 items an hour. And in some cases, they can even do more than that if we're doing it like they're typing or doing something on some CSV files or something like that, and we're massive uploading you know, a couple hundred at a time. We can speed that up even better in some cases. So that lowers my overall expenses. You know, So it, it's, it's a number you should know. It's, a, it's literally a number. Whether you equate your time, you know, 20 bucks an hour, 30 bucks an hour, you're figuring is what your time's worth. Whatever it is, if, if let's say you go out and source and every day you go out and source, you've done an average in how much you're, you're able to pick up and how much average you're making for those sourcing trips, you can kind of judge on your time out how much time, you, what your time is worth. You need to know the value if it's just you, what your time is worth. Again, you, you need to make some business decisions if it's taking you too long and you're wasting far too much time on listing stuff. Again, once I gave up clothing, man, I, I was able to pretty much double my listings that we had before when we were doing closing. Literally, just almost double them overnight, just with different items. So what happens when you double your listings? You also increase your sales. Now, the sales aren't going to double just because I have double um, amount of listings. It doesn't work to that relationship. You might see a, a 30% increase above and beyond what you normally do from that amount, but usually just doesn't double with the oddball uh, stuff we sell. So time is, is a key factor. And again, I tell people this all the time, and, and they, don't, they don't look at it that way. You, you've got to break down all of what you're doing based on, on time or some factor to figure out where you would be better off either spending your time or spending your money. Buying items that don't cost you as much of your time and labor to list will save you money even with just the cost of buying the items. So, you know, it might take you five times as long to list a shirt. You could buy, uh, you know, 20 other items and list those 20 items in, you know, uh, much less time in some cases than it, it took you to list like five items if they're clothing. Mind you, clothing may go for a little more if you've got the right clothing, but it might sit for a while, and the paper items fly once you get a certain steady amount of flow coming in. So, Or antiques, or whatever your niche may be. I mean, toy sellers, the same thing. I've talked to some toy sellers that just sell vintage toys, and they've got, man, I, I'm surprised they can find that much vintage toys and certain lines of toys like early Kenner and stuff like that, especially NOS and especially some of the foreign ones. I'm looking into that because there are buyers, international buyers, that will buy you a shipment of vintage toys, NOS and things like that, from countries like Brazil and things like that, too. So I am already in conversations with groups that do that. Um, I have people that buy for me, if, if you don't know. There's other people who have people that buy for them, and that's how some of that works. But time, again, pay attention to your time. Make a chart. Make yourself a scheduled chart of what hours you worked, what you did on those hours, what you bought, how much you bought, what you came out of that with. You can figure this all out. I mean, it's just like doing sales projections and all that. It, it actually works. And, you know, people think, you know, I'm, I'm crazy. I'm wasting too much time in this and too much time in that. It, it's a few minutes there. And, and you, you can help steer your company, your business, in a direction that will make you more money. It, it's, it's a given. You know, if you can control your time, you're controlling costs, you can steer yourself away from blowing money and time and your energy for no reason. You're spinning your wheels. You know, I hear people saying, well, I got so many listings up. I got this up. I got that up. Having a bunch of listings up in themselves doesn't do you any good if they're not good items. If I say, you know, have 10,000 items up and they're just junk, 
it's not going to matter. You know, every single item that I have in my stores has has been researched. I've checked them all or I know it's going to sell and I don't need to do the research because I've sold them so many times. So, you know, I don't like to potluck it with stuff. I'm, I'm not a cloth. I don't like selling clothing at all. I'll just even if there's good money in it, I just don't like selling it. I don't like it. I don't like the whole aspect of it. It takes longer. I get it. I get more annoyed with clothing, even though I didn't have a bunch of returns with it or anything like that. I'm just not a clothing person. I love the paper and I love what I do. So I don't have to do something I don't like to do. Again, there's a lot of people who like clothing. There's a lot of money to be made in clothing. Nothing wrong with clothing. I've got friends who do clothing. Again, I'm not trying to cut it down, but it, it's gotten a lot harder and it's going to get a lot harder too. You know, I, I weighed all those factors. I weighed the factors of employees, how easily they can make a mistake on a piece of clothing that could cost me a return or they'll miss something. So if it comes down to me wasting my time to doing the clothing, it, it's not worth the, the, the amount of money I'm blowing from my own personal hours to do it. So that's why I don't do clothing for one and I don't like it for another. So anyway, let's hop back over here. Got 180 some odd people in right now. Uh, if you haven't hit the like button, please hit that like button. It does give some love to the channel there if you enjoy it. Yeah, I see Annie and, and uh, Marty are talking about um, the bulk. Yeah, I'll have to look into that. I'll get back on you that one, too. Uh, hang on. I'm sorry. I got two laptops running right now. Uh, hey, Stun Law, Law, uh, Stun Law One. How are you doing this evening? Good to see you. Yeah, I will have to look in the bulk edit though. But when I bulk edit, we're editing 500 or whatever the limits are at a time. I haven't. I think Marty, I think you're the one who told me you can edit more at a time, like a thousand, if I'm not mistaken. I've never done over 500, so if that'll tell you when the last time I did a bulk edit. I feel like the five cent and two percent less in fees on most listings will make the additional fees for multiple item orders a wash in the end. Um, if they pay at once, as we said with with the malt, with the listing, you only pay that one time fee. But if they pay for like ten items one at a time, which happens to me quite often, it does tend to hit you. Now I have added on on another account the twenty five cent uh, handling fee to compensate me a little bit for that. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. I know personally with the amount of people that do it, buy stuff, and then they'll buy another one and another one, and the ones that I have to refund, it's a pretty high percentage. Um, into the thousands a year of the amount of, of postage paid that I end up refunding. I mean, I went through taxes. I, I personally looked at all the numbers before they were turned over to the accountant. So, you know, it was a lot of money, thousands and thousands of dollars that we refund in, in shipping because of people doing that. So that's what I'm basing my increase in fees. I'm not saying it's going to be a ton of ton of money and it might be worth it with the increase in sales. The point of it is, though, it's not going to be cheaper for me. That, that's that's the, the gist of it. The cost, what they said is not going to be cheaper for me personally. Again, it's a majority, they said. They didn't say everybody, so I can't ding them for say, or for having that, that thing. I have a different situation than most people and the way people buy from me that tends to happen more, it seems, than it does to other people in certain areas. Again, I sell a lot to the same person quite often. I, I Almost every day, somebody's buying three, four, five, six items. In many cases, two, three, four, five people are buying more than two or three items in the very same day, every day of the week these days. Just before the show started, I sold three items to the same person. He did pay separately for each one of those three items. It adds up pretty quickly. I, I want to say... The number of refunded postage last year was like in the seventy-two hundred dollar range, so it gives you a number. That's a that's a and again, I don't refund postage on the majority of them, so it should give you a some kind of idea. That's a pretty big number. If I'm paying a higher increase fee, thirty cents on multiple listings like that or multiple sales, it's adding up, and that's where I'm basing it from again. Managed payments. Can you register two separate eBay accounts with the same bank account and manage payments? Yes, you can do that with PayPal as well, too. We have two tied to a PayPal account, too. Um, let me pop down here. Yeah, Bar Light Broker. I mean... I'm not upset with the fees so much. I'm, a, I'm, I'm bothered by the fact that I can't sell certain items 
nothing has changed for more than a year of the promises they'd have all these items in there. And I have to wonder on their honest and sincere uh, uh, intent on why they're getting rid of certain categories. Again, I'm not one to read into um, conspiracy or anything, but after reading a couple Reddits, as I said, um, I'm, there might be something to them trying to make the company more appealing to sell, possibly. That could be a thing that these the venture capitalists who are on the board of directors are looking to do. And that would clear out any, any intertwining with another company. They wouldn't have to deal with anybody but eBay for a purchase. And that is a huge ordeal for if you're buying out a company. Let's, let's put it this way. I worked for a, a store or a company, and we bought out a couple stores to turn them into our own stores, competitor stores, in the Washington, D.C. market. It was it was a nuisance for and they were private ones. We bought out a couple private ones run by two different people, and the end result is one had some bank tie-in. That was a nuisance. It took forever. It was just a pain in the butt, and, and I don't know if it was even worth the hassle. The other one was directly owned by one person. There was no other tie-ins or nothing else like that. Everything was fine. So, again, this is just some random Reddit. I'm not going to say it's true. I don't. Who knows? But but after reading the Reddit on the executives from October of last year. I would have thought that was crazy, and it turned out to be word for word what happened. So I, I kind of wonder if that might be something what's going on. This, this Reddit that I read was the same basic thing. Somebody worked at eBay, was in a conversation, blah, 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 and this is what's going to transpire. Again, who knows if that's true? I'm not trying to spread rumors that aren't true, but again, the last one I thought was crazy was true, 100%. Um, so, you know, you got to wonder. You got to wonder. In, in aspect of it, though, again, for the amount of money I make off of eBay, even with the fees, I don't really have a complaint. My profit margins are so high, and I'm I'm 80 percent. I'm literally an 80 percent profit margin on the majority of what I sell. Again, I pay a dollar. I might sell for 50 bucks. I might sell for 20 bucks. This is all day long, and most of the items aren't even that expensive. Again, we've steered ourselves into categories that are small take up less time, less space, less time to photograph or scan. Scanning is the best, um, you know, and it saves us money. So lowering my my cost of goods, my COGS, and raising my my profit margin is, is what a business does. I didn't start off this way. I didn't start off making, you know, some high horrendous one. I was lucky to get, you know, 30%, 40% maybe when we first started because I wasn't doing for it. I didn't know all the individual areas. And that's what you're going to have to deal with when you're starting off in this. But once you figure that out and you actually pay attention to write some numbers down, math is your friend, I'm telling you. Uh, I mean, I've shown some people, you know, how to set up stuff. And I've, I've went over people with people, a time, time charts and things like that too. And once they figured out that they were wasting all of this time with stupid stuff, they started making more money because they cut that the, the BS out. They cut out watching a video in between or taking this or doing that. And they were able to see what the issues were. They didn't see them until they wrote them down. I mean, some it's going to take that for many people. Um, I always write stuff down. So, you know... I, I've always done that. I used to be the guy. I'd have to verify everybody's hours, and I did payroll for the whole store because I was the general manager. So you, you get the gist of that, and you realize how important all these numbers are. I'm, I'm telling you, if you're not doing that, you're probably blowing 10 hours a week. You could be blowing a whole week's worth of work at the end of a month. I'm, that's not ridiculous, and that's not some unheard of things. I could probably, well, I wouldn't want to share people's personal stuff, but I've got, you know, time charts from people now and it, it literally shows almost 10 hours for some folks they were shocked they were they were dumbfounded that that this is how it worked they wrote down everything it only works though if you write down when you're doing something you only got to do it for a week you know just enough to show you what's going on but do it for a full week if you're going to do it you know if somebody wants maybe a video on that or a, a breakdown with a sheet that i can attach so you can keep track for one week you know, I'll be happy to put something together. Um, leave some comments in the comment section, not in the live chat, because I hardly ever get a chance to go back through and look at that. So in the comment section, if you'd really like that. You know, I've done it personally for a few people, and they, they're making more money now. And I'm not trying to say it's it's me. It's just them seeing the, the loss, seeing the amount of time. And again, if you figure out the amount of hours um, that you're wasting or the amount of time it takes you to do certain things, you're going to see it. You might be able to gain 12 hours a week without doing any, spending any more time away from family. You may be able to just work smarter. It's always better to work smarter, not necessarily longer, but smarter. 
and you're going to make more money. I, I, I can't express that enough. The time chart, using time management properly is, is it, it's so important. It, it's right up there. It's in the top five, I would say. And far too many people haven't a clue or don't realize they're wasting time. Uh, I won't say it again. I don't want to drill a dead horse here, but, but that's the facts of the matter here. I can tell you for sure, without a doubt, internet shopping. You can sell things uh, for more on Amazon, for instance, but Amazon buyers come with a lot more probs, at least in our experience. For, for selling in the collectible section, I have never had a return. I have never once had a complaint. I have never had an issue. I've never had a shipping issue. But if I go to NOS, yes, I have had some issues. Um, and there were, the, the last issue I had was something I did. So I, I can't say it's anything to do with Amazon. A company, I sold some crafting supplies. NOS, I bought a whole bunch of them at a thrift store. In fact, they're in a hall, I think. Um, I think we've sold them all now. But the company changed the packaging for the item. And I didn't, didn't, I didn't catch it. I didn't realize that they updated the listing and again, I piggybacked off another listing. I, I had permission to sell the item, and I, you know, I bought, bought a bunch of them from somewhere else. It wasn't an item I was gated in as well, some of the other ones. So I just used the pre-existing listing. Once I sent it out and they got it, they're like, what the heck is this? This doesn't look like the picture, blah, blah, blah. It was the exact same item, same item number, same everything, but the package was wrong. And it cost us, I mean, I just ended up letting them keep it because it wasn't worth the, the time or effort for them mailing back a $15 item or whatever it was. I mean... It was pointless. We lost. Well, we didn't really lose, but but you know those are the type of issues that I usually see or something like that. I haven't had any big time issues like everybody talks about on Amazon either. Again, because a lot of what we do sell on Amazon is vintage collectibles. You know, we do all the NOS. I do all that FBA and all that stuff too. But you know, I just don't have those issues. You know, we're we're very specific on what we sell. I stay away from stuff that causes issues. If I have a bunch of issues or returns on an item, I'm not going to sell it anymore. There's so many other stuff that you can move around to if you really want to. So don't don't force yourself into selling something that, that's high risk. That's all I can say, like electronic items. If I sell electronic items, I'm usually going to sell parts and pieces these days. You know, there's not much that can go wrong with a spindle or, you know, a hub or something from a reel-to-reel -reel or something, you know. And the parts all sell extremely well, better than me selling a full unit most times, most cases. Uh... CJ Spino, how do you think eBay stock earnings will pan out? I can imagine managed payments will help guidance. Managed payments will, will sh give them a, a, a good bottom line, would be my guess. We may not see it this year because I think they might have some issues. Again, they were down 6.1 or 6.2% in overall sales volume last year, 2.2 or 2.3, I think, the year before that. So they're already down like 8 point, what was that, 8.3, 8 8.4 percent from three years ago. So looking at the numbers, you know, they've got to do something. They're spending a fortune on advertising, don't forget. But again, they sold StubHub and they reinvested $4 billion in the stock buybacks to raise their own pocketbooks, but they didn't do something, they didn't do overly above anything to fix some of the side issues is my only draw. If they don't fix the side issues and they're just doing this money grab, it's not going to improve the site overall. Yeah, they'll still be getting more money coming in because they'll be the central processors of the money. But if you can't keep more people on the site, that number is only, only going to last so long. If the site overall sales keep going down year after year after year, I think this year will slow down. It won't be up in the 6% maybe four, who knows, maybe they'll, they'll, they'll do some good numbers this year because of, you know, taking more money from us, just like they did with promoted listings. That was what made them money last year. They sold less items, but they made more money because they scooped in a couple hundred million dollars or whatever it was from managed payments, collecting more fees from us. I don't use managed payments. Haven't since last October. Haven't had any issues. Never going to go use them again, ever. Just FYI. I get that question still Still to this day, because people still see that video quite often. I'm really surprised how many people see that a day. Still like 50 or something, surprisingly. But I still get that question, and I still do not use managed or uh, promoted listings at all. It's still They're still blocked. I don't care. I'm not going to use them. But uh, anyway, let's hop to back to some questions here. I got 218 people on. I need three more likes. Come on. We can get three more to get this to 100 before the show ends here. Um... Let me get down to some more questions here. Uh, Sales-wise, um, let's just touch on sales for just a second here. Um, 
sales wise. My sales are still fine. I'm still in the same range. And most people that I talk to who sell vintage and collectibles aren't affected by anything. Now, I have gotten quite a few people that have shut it out that their sales have, have dropped. The summer slowdown is what they're saying. And it's, you know, a little later than usual because of the pandemic and things like that, too. But apparently there is a summer slowdown. There obviously is um, quite a few, another one point some odd million people filed for unemployment. So the numbers are horrendous that way, too. So I will say that there probably will be some sales issues for many people. As we go into here again, I really think a lot of people though will save up what they can, and fourth quarter will still be good. I think it'll be the best fourth quarter. I won't want to say best for every, but my opinion is this fourth quarter will see the highest volume na nationally, not like eBay or anything, but highest volume nationally of uh, the biggest ever um, purchases for a season, fourth quarter, will be this year over any other prior year just because of more people understand and aren't as worried about doing online purchases anymore because of the pandemic. The pandemic has 100% changed the flow and how quickly everybody's moving over to online purchases. So, And that's not going to change. It's just going to increase from here, especially as more lockdowns and all the other stuff keep going on. So... I, I, I'm, I'm hesitant on the whole stock option thing there. I'm not big into stocks anymore at all, honestly, either. We've got them in, like, uh, utilities companies is where most of ours lie right right these days. Um, I had some in, in Disney for a while. Again, I worked there for 10 years, and we did the, you know, stock purchase uh, program, and it's doubled. I mean, there's some stocks that are still good, but right now eBay is not a good one. Not eBay. Disney is not a super one because of the park issues and things like that, too. Uh, where are we at? Hang on here. Let's slide down. I want to get some more questions. Better Barbie, how are you doing? Thanks for that. Um, the tax reporting requirements for reporting, um, that's tied to the federal government. That's an IRS issue if you do so much more than so many dollars in sales. As I said before, if we purchase so much from certain one individual, those have to be, I have to fill out bank documents when I purchase five or when I, not when I, I don't think it's 5,000. I think the last one I had to fill out was in the ten ten thousand $10,000 range. If you purchase more than a certain amount from somebody, you have to report it. And since PayPal is collecting or eBay or whoever is going to be collecting, if the number or the amount of money they collect for you, again, your one person is over a certain amount, it has to be reported for income tax purposes. So that's not something that has to do with eBay or PayPal or any of those. That is a federal regulation when you're doing volume to one person. Again, you, they have collected whether it's individual collections or not, they have collected money for one person, you, me, whoever they're talking about. So that's when that regulation comes in from, from that. Um, never more sales. How are you doing? Bit off topic. We heard today that the post office will scale hours back to four hours a day here locally. Anyone else heard of this going on in your local area? Well, thank you very kindly. I would say that's probably just due to short staff. I know for sure, for sure, in the Midwest and stuff, there are some areas that are short staffed and items are backing up or packages have backed up and then they're sent in like huge quantities and then they slow down again and they send them out. So there's some issues going on. Um, there's nothing around here or nothing about any of the other ones that I've heard of. Now, I've heard talk from somebody else that told me that, but it seems to be a regional aspect based on how many people they have physically working for them at this point. You know, some people, you know, aren't working, aren't showing up for work because they've got to walk up and see lots of people, especially the ones who do, like, business routes. You've got to go in a building sometimes. You know, our mail person picks up building at our work location, so... You know, you, you got to wonder, you know, they're short staffed, I know for sure. And we've had issues with packages being late, sometimes, you know, as I said earlier, even over 30 days late. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, say that's a, a national issue at all. I, that's really a regional from what I personally have seen. Um, hopefully that's not the case for you, though. If they pick up at your location, it shouldn't really matter, though. I don't go to the post office almost never, unless it's just for my P.O. Box or, or something like that. Uh, Amazon Seller 99, they have to verify you're not on a terrorist watch list, USA Patriot Act, and they also have to know your custom uh, customer requirement. 
I can see the Patriot Act. That's another thing. Again, I did have an issue with PayPal. Not an issue, I should say, but I used uh, a word of a country's name that was on a, a block list. And, and just because I, I typed in those four letters into a conversation, they held a transaction. Again, I don't personally blame that on, on them, but even after I re said what it was and offered a photo of the actual stuff, you know, it still took like five, six days for them to clear it out. I didn't need the money, so it wasn't an issue, but. Yeah, internet shopping is telling the same thing. That's an IRS issue for sure. Uh, some of these eBay errors are false positive when relisting sold items. Yeah, I mean, most of the time, if it tells you there was an issue, when I go back in and look, like 90% of the time, it, it accomplished the activity. It just didn't show the, the listing where you can go back in and look at it after it's listed. Again, we list now from InkFrog, so I don't even see any of that stuff at all. I have not had one single error listing through InkFrog to eBay. Maybe they pop up and I just don't have to deal with it. I don't know. But the item goes up and I'm fine. And I can verify it at the end of the shift when they list. They don't cross. Uh, how to tell when you're doing InkFrog, I'll tell you this real quick, if everything went okay. At the end of the day, I can pull up and I, I click um, to sync with from InkFrog to Shopify. And I can always see the listings there. As long as it shows up on that list, I can just click right on down and then sync just those manually to my Shopify store. As long as they're able there and they show up in the list, everything's fine. That's that's I figured that much out from doing this. No issues from that point. But yeah, I would agree, Joe. False positives for sure. Uh, let's see here. Hey, Dom, primetime treasure hunter in the house. How are you doing this evening, Dom? Hope you are doing well. I, I got a uh, text from you, and I didn't even get a chance to get back in. I've been moving since I got up this morning. I'm trying to catch up. So for those in, in Patreon, I'll, I'll call it one more time. Um, I There's a 45-minute video I just posted today. I've been working my butt off since, since I've been feeling better. I've done videos galore. I've, you know, trying to work between staff coming in and everything else. So I got a lot of content coming back up, full online, two-hour live show tomorrow on Patreon as well, and the whole work. So those in Patreon have some questions ready. We'll probably look at um, uh, some more on Shopify as well as Ink Frog because I've had some questions. CSV file I'm going to do in a video just because I want to be able to express it and explain it clearly. Um, sometimes I don't say it the way I want to when I'm talking live on explaining the details and I don't want to confuse anybody with the CSV file so those patrons you'll see the CSV file I promise that's our whole you know structure of doing the Amazon with this so it's not forgotten I'm just I want to make sure it's right and I don't want to mix anything up I have mixed up occasionally here and there and I don't want to have any errors on something this important in my book this is the structure and where we're going forward with this, as I said. CS file, CSV files upload to Amazon, straight to Amazon, and then um, we've got the Amazon channel, and then we're going to sync the Shopify listing to the Amazon listing that I CSV filed upload. It works. I know it does. I've already tested it. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to get that to you too as well. So um, that's the only way to still... The structure I got, and again, I got a video on that. The only way to keep the ability to do um, best offer is to do it through InkFrog if you have managed payments as of now and you're, you're trying to do a Shopify. Um, I can't do uh, best offer through eBay's API in Shopify. I have to use InkFrog. It doesn't, it's not an option. And the eBay API in Shopify, as of the last I looked, and this is like 10 or 12 days ago, does not allow the managed payments to go through. So anyway, I don't know how that's going to work for those with it. Maybe they're avoiding the forced, um, you know, managed payments. or not. I don't know. I, I have no idea. I just know I'm happy with InkFrog so far. Uh, well worth the 60 bucks I pay total for Shopify and InkFrog every month. 60 bucks is a drop in the bucket for the security and, and the feeling knowing that I own every photo and nothing can get lost anymore. It's all there. So anyway. Susan, how are you doing? I feel like I'm missing out since I have heard that sales go up after getting on MP. I said I was interested, but no invite. I can't register you said better to do so before fourth quarter. I think they've already got a list. And if you're on a list for a certain time frame, you're on that list. There's not going to be any changes from the deviation on those lists. They've probably like picked a couple big ones, a bunch of small ones. They probably balanced it out based on how much problems they may have. Not with the 
people themselves, but with the technical and bank accounts and things like that. They would assume people like in my level probably have everything they need immediately. Maybe some of the smaller people who haven't been on as long may not have that information. So those are the ones that are going to take them probably longer to make sure they get them all correct and ready to go. At least that's my opinion. Now, that's what I would do. You know, I'd kind of sparse it out uh, sparingly as I do it. Um, I'll drop you a text in the morning, Dom. Well, I wanted to shoot you something. Um, again, if you don't don't know who Dom Primetime Treasure Hunter is, he is like uh, best friends of the show here in the channel. We do stuff together quite often. I pretty much probably chat with Dom almost every day, sometimes most of the day too. But um, Dom's like the only one that's like, I'm not saying the only one, the only one that I know personally that's like us and stuff. So uh, we get along pretty darn well, I would say. And Dom's a real good guy too. So anyway, check out Primetime Treasure Hunter's channel if you don't know. Uh, thank you very kindly for that. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Denise, how are you doing? I'm in UK. Yes, there are staggering accounts and stages. That's exactly what I figured as well. I mean, I pay attention to all that kind of stuff. Again, we do buy. I do have accounts on um, five eBay accounts, five different sites. Again, because we buy foreign items quite often. Um, something you do, you know, when you're collectors or you're into certain things. Uh Dan, uh, great eBay history video. I forgot about those diet pills. That's the back in the day when diet pills were fat. Nowadays, it's the vitamin scammers and stuff like that all over the place. Everybody wants to sell vitamins. You know, uh, vitamins do not have to pass the FDA for the most part, if you're unaware of that. A lot of them don't. I can't say all of them, but like nutritional supplements and stuff, none of that's approved. None of the information stated on those bottles has been tested for the most part, too. And that's true. You can look that up if you want, but... Um, I'm not saying we don't, you know, buy, you know, over-the-counter vitamins and stuff, and I'm not saying that they're not good. I'm just saying a bunch of them have no scientific study. Like Flintstones vitamins have been studied and tested and all that kind of stuff. If it's for a child, and certain brands are, are perfectly fine, but I'm always hesitant on certain things like that. Uh, I'm not paying taxes on things I already paid taxes on. If you're buying the item to resell, you don't have to pay taxes. So if you bought it paying taxes and you sell them on eBay, you got to pay taxes on them. You're going to have to. That's the law. You know, that's how antiques have worked and used items for forever. You know, it's just, just the nature of business in general. You're going to have to do it. Yeah, internet shopping is telling you the same thing. You, you, it, it's just, it's the law. You're not double paying. If you bought the items and you pay tax, that's on you. If, if you're buying something to resell, you, you just show them your, your uh, reselling license. That's all you got to do. I mean, I'm on account in most of the places. They have us on file in the places I go to over and over again. I don't have to show them anything. I just say I'm on file, especially like big antique malls. Every antique mall that I go to in store has a copy of my my um, tax uh, slip, you know, they, so that's all I needed. In fact, you can download one from eBay and um, use it on eBay even as well. So you don't pay taxes on items you're going to resell from eBay. That's something else you can do if you didn't know that. There's a link for it. If type in um, submit um, tax verification or your uh, sales tax slip is, I think, what it says. And you should be able to find it on Google. There's a page that just has that information for you. Again, if, if for eBay's call center and an anchor supporter or enterprise, you're, you're, you're calling California. Every, I talk to someone here in this country, in California, every single call I get. Every single one's in, in California. So it just depends on the level of store you are at as to where you're going to talk to. Uh, let's pop on down here. I know it looks like I'm far behind. I'm sorry. I don't know what time it is even. Uh, we'll go for just a few more minutes here just because we're in a good discussion. I got 227 people on now. We hit that 100 mark. I appreciate everybody for hitting that thumbs up for us here. Thank you very kindly. Um, let's see here, Susan. If a buyer chooses medium mail for a book and it's over 11 days, does eBay have any allowance for medium mail being slower? Um, it's not... The 10-day thing is not... 10 days for shipment time that 10 day thing is for if you go to the tracking and look at the tracking if let's say on the 9th it posted that the item is moving in tracking it's moving through the country 
if it doesn't show up in 10 more, if there's no tracking for 10 more days, eBay in the past, I don't know technically again what they're stating now because they're still dinging or, or sending out notices if it's over 10 days. But if it hasn't moved, hasn't shown any new tracking in 10 days, then it can be considered lost in eBay Center. That, there's actually a policy that states that. And at one point, somebody had sent me like, a, I don't know if it's an internal document or something, but it was a paragraph literally from an eBay document that stated over 10 days, that's when it's considered lost. If there's no tracking information, that doesn't mean it's not showing up in 10 days. That means if there's no tracking, it can be 30 days late, but as long as there's tracking within less time frame than 10 days, it's fine. It's not lost. That's the factor from eBay. And I've, I've heard that personally from eBay. I've seen it from eBay. So I know that's the fact that they go by. I've had this discussion with them on a couple of conversations. And one of them was kind of heated because of what they were saying was not legit. And I had to talk to somebody else to, for them to say that. So anyway, uh, I send media all the time too. So I haven't had any issues with media hitting me at all. No dings or nothing. Brenda, is that 10, 11th business days or just calendar days? Um, it's days in general because the post office uh, scanning scans those posts anytime. The po even though the post office may not be open, your packages are still moving. Even on Sundays, Saturday nights, most of the scans, your tracking will show up like at 3 in the morning, 4 in the morning in the first place. Because a lot of times it's the end of the day when the, the, the plane you know, takes them off. So it, it'll fly, it'll land, you know, it, it, whatever. They might scan a whole bin at once and then it shows up in the middle of the night and new, new tracking. So it, it's not like um, you know, business days or anything. It's, it's tracking days. And again, this is from eBay. This is word for word what, what came from eBay and several different conversations as well as the posting. Yeah, and, and bar light broker, even on your personal items, if you sell them in a garage sale, you still have to report that. If you're selling them online, you still have to pay the taxes on it. You know, it's just the way it is, you know. If you are a business, if you're selling them not as a business, just as a person selling his stuff, your chances are may not even make enough to have to worry about reporting it. You don't have to necessarily do what you would if you were a business. So you, you might not have to pay taxes on certain things, income tax we're talking about, depending on those factors. So it just depends. I'm doing this as a business. If I sell something, I'm paying taxes on it if it's being sold on my business account. You can have a personal account and sell stuff that's non-business related, but sell them on a different account and have a different bank account tied to it. Don't tie personal to a business account ever. So just FYI. Thirty of your packages have not got there at all. That's some horrendous amount. When let me tell you this, this is what I've done, and it's every time the packages show up. If you're missing a package and it's more than seven days of no tracking, of no tracking, I always go in now since the pandemic for the last five months and I file a claim, a missing item report through the U.S. Post Office. I have an account. I've had one for years. We renew everything through there. We can set up pickups through there. I can mail through there. Everything I want to do, I can do through there. Sign up for a USPS.gov account. Go in there and file a report for a missing package search. And they will, every time I've done that, mysteriously the package has shown up. And the next day or two, tracking information popped up. But it looks like his stuff's just sitting there again because they're short-staffed or whatever the case may be. And, you know, once it's been reported, then they go, oh, look, we got to do something with this. I don't know how it all works, but when you file one of those reports, it goes to the post office that last handled it or is currently supposed to have it. And it's fixed the issue within a few days. I, every time I've done that, and I've had to do it like 15 times now, every time within a few days of me doing that, it's shown up. So, you know, that that's just my personal recommendation. Open up a report. You know, I'm not blaming anybody, but it, it seems to work, you know. Uh, uh, John here, you're saying after 10 days they got refund an item. It, the item, again, if there's no scan for 10 days, you can fight that if they're trying to give it to you, give it to them just for a 10 day thing. It has to be no scan for more than 10 days. On 10 days and one hour, the, the buyer can claim that it's lost. And then the case would be opened up, and then eBay is going to side with them, at least 
that's how it was before the pandemic. Again, they did say they would address that, but I don't see it from what everybody's now telling me and from what I've been told before. Again, I don't know how to play that out because I've had to refund something and had no way to get in touch with them. Thank goodness I was able to Google and find some more information on it. was somebody who bought it from a business and he used a business name to have it sent to. So at least I was able to contact him. He wanted to pay for it. He even told me to and I couldn't figure out how to do it. Because again, you can't send your PayPal email address through eBay. So you, you can't get payment again. And once you refund him in PayPal, I didn't have his information anymore. It, it didn't show up any way for me to send him any contact information because as far as PayPal was concerned, the, the transaction was done. He got his money. There was nothing left to do. And I couldn't contact him through PayPal either, which was weird. Usually you can send them a payment notice using that. And I was unable. I couldn't get his email address to do that. Let's see here. Uh, Dr. Full, I have a, more than a half dozen media mail items in limbo somewhere. Yeah, as I said, I, I don't have... I track a lot of items. I've got one from a customer now that... Uh, I've sent them four different packages... The the second package hasn't made it, but the, the third and the fourth and the first one have. So, you know, that kind of stuff happens. It, it, there's no set route these days, apparently. Whatever, you know, plane or truck isn't available at a certain time, they, they may reroute packages in different directions and things like that. I watch packages coming in just curiosity. I, I don't like waiting for packages. And again, I, I get the whole gist, so I pay attention to those those things. Open up a case. Go and open up a claim or search for a lost package. There's three options you can do. You only can do two of them if you don't have insurance. But the not the first option, not the f look for it or research. Do the second one, which is um, a request or something. There's two options. Do the, the middle one is the one you want when you're going to file for a missing package claim. Maybe I'll even do a little video and just show you where I'm talking about because it works. For it, it calls attention to those missing packages. Maybe they were just blocked up somewhere and it's been pulled up and they've shown up. Again, I haven't had a, a package that hasn't shown up. Every single one, whether they were lost for days or a week or 10 days or 15 days, whatever, they've all shown up, every one of them. So again, I, I can't say for you, I don't know where they're going to and from. Uh, sell items for less. Oh, wow. How you doing, Dirt Road Picker? Welcome to the show. Uh, Trackstar 064 Life. How's my quarter four sourcing? We did that last year, so I'm been done. I'm not doing worrying about it quarter four at all. I've got everything I need. We, we do it a year in advance these days. I did it in October of last year. So, um, fourth quarter's been done. i at least what I, I need to do or work with. Um, and if you've watched the videos, I've got so much inventory, it's not even funny. We got like, um, we're heading on the 10 grand mark just in invested in buttons and stuff. I don't really need anything these days. <clears throat> I'm not sourcing anything, really, unless a picker calls and um, I don't want to lose a picker. That's the only reason I'm going out anywhere. Or fun, I guess, but I'm not going to a flea market anytime soon either. <clears throat> nose pickings uh, let's see I ran some Google and Facebook ads for my Shopify store FBA was way cheaper and better targeting <laughs> yeah I'm gonna we're gonna play around with that too um Google is my first choice I've used Google before and Google you can really target down with Facebook, you're only targeting down... Mostly Facebook, I see with groups and things like that. With Google, I can target specific sites. When somebody searches for a certain site, let's put it this way, I can use those as targets. When somebody's you know searching for a certain keyword, I can use those for targets. For me, that'll be a plus versus limiting it to, to Facebook in general. The Google search is far greater and has a far better reach than Facebook. Again, they're both good, but... For, for what I'm looking at and my experience in, in how to target in Google, it's better in my book. Again, because I can target people who are literally just looking to buy something.
versus people are just liking certain items. I, I guess that's the difference in, in my book. The cost is different. I, I fully agree, too, and it is cheaper. You can get, Again, it depends on how you want to want to do this. I'm looking for specific types of repeat customers based on the re repeat customers I already have. So I need to target specifically to certain things. And, and it's much easier in my book because I'm not worrying about just worrying about Facebook targets, but I'm worrying about overall anybody searching the web. I got all of that, uh, you know, a uh, bit of information as opposed to just Facebook specific locked in site information. I guess that's the difference. Uh, Daryl, Aunt Jemima ad today, eBay would not let me list it. Couldn't get past the problem with the listing screen. Yeah, they're all blocked. All that stuff is. They pulled down something that was in no way a racially um, motivated item that I listed. And I was shocked. I'm like, come on. It, it was something that, that it was more a glorifying piece. It, it made no sense. It, it, it was something... Um, I'm not going to get into the item specific because I still plan on selling it somewhere else. But the point is they're pulling down. I've had people tell me like records from musicians, African-American musicians were pulled down. And just odds and odds and odds and ends of stuff. Even some action figures like a couple of Barbies. I had somebody tell me that were pulled down because they're African-American Barbies. I don't know if it was specifically the way the title was worded or what. But you're not going to be able to sell a Barbie doll because it's African American. I don't know. That's just that's going a little too far. If that's really the way they are going, I think it was a mistake. But who knows? Uh, I got you there, Daryl. I fully got you. Uh, Put the listing into Google Shopping. Yeah, I'm going to have all that. Yeah, we've been playing around with a lot of that. Uh, let's see here. We're going to end this in just a few moments here. Hey, Charles, how are you doing this evening? Uh, it sounds like the whole Shopify Ink Frog deal is a complete headache and very complicated. I long for days when we could just list and sell, no hassle, no trouble. Charles, when you get the whole thing set up, and if you don't have tens of thousands of listings, it's nothing, in, in all honesty. I'd have been done like the first day if I would have just had my original listings. Again, I, I wanted to include all of certain information from my listings that were imported. I paid from another service. If you just use InkFrog and, and uh, sync your listings straight from InkFrog to Shopify, it's immediate. I wouldn't have had to do any of this. The only way, reason I did this is because if I do it through InkFrog, it doesn't include the condition box in several categories. So I would have to go back in and list the condition of every single record and a lot of stuff. And it, that's the reason I originally picked this way. If, if that wasn't an issue and I didn't have that type of issue, I would have been done the first day I did it. In all honesty, it would have just been just as easy as Hip or Bonanza's or any of these other ones. Just clicking a few buttons, it does its thing. You w we wake up the next morning and it would have been done. I'm linking pre-existing you know, listings from... And if I would have done this from the start, again, it would have been all ready to go and I wouldn't have had any consideration. So it's frustrating now for me only because I've got so many listings. That That's... that's personally my 100% honest opinion on that. Had it not been that case, had I just went with just InkFrog and not some other service to upload or transfer my listings to, to Shopify, I wouldn't have had this issue. And at this point, we literally are deleting every listing in our Shopify, and we're just going to do that, actually, and lose that data. I'm not going to mess with it anymore, and it'll be all ready to go. So, again, I'm not playing with it anymore. I said we're going to get this done. We're going to get it done. I will give up a little bit of information for each listing and worry about it later. You know, it's not going to be the end of the world um, I, I, at this point. So take it with heart, Charles, on that. Only because, again, I've got a totally different experience than most people will have just by sheer quantity and sites that I'm trying to cobble together. We're already on these sites, so I've got to figure out how to link them. If you're starting off with a couple hundred listings, even a thousand, it, it shouldn't be anything for you to accomplish the move to an InkFrog. InkFrog was an instantaneous thing. That was nothing. To hook up eBay to InkFrog was quick, easy, minutes. You know, And even hooking up Shopify, it's just the linking. So if you want an item to pull down, you've got to do it a certain way. Again, if I export out from InkFrog to Shopify, I don't have to map anything. All I would have to map, though, is the, the ones that I manually upload 
to Amazon. That's it. And I've already shown that in those in Patreon. It's simple. It's quick. You can do a couple mappings in a in a in a, a sec. I mean, it's literally a few seconds to do it. So you could probably map in a minute like five listings. I mean, it's nothing. So take it with heart at that. You know, it, it, Shopify is good. I have seen it in person. I've seen it work. I know people have done a Shopify store for like six years or better and their their business grows once once people know you're there once you've got your clientele you advertise a little bit here and there you push during the seasons you you'll be good to go as long as your items are good again we're going with the good items of course i'm gonna have to cut it off there i don't want to uh, be rude but we're heading in here um we're at the hour and a half mark i always try to only do it for an hour on top of it so um we'll do just a few last minute uh, uh call outs here Again, the Weebles video, part two, is up tomorrow. It's a little longer than the last one. Totally different, totally different stuff you'll be seeing. Three is, uh, video three will be coming out shortly. There'll be some other videos along those same lines to try, try and show you, you know, certain collectible fields. They'll be more advanced. They'll have more details. Um, we tried to add in whatever we could think of into the Weebles video, trying to give you an overall uh, guide and view on it. Um, it's something that we do personally collect every Weeble you see in all the Weebles videos we own personally. Um, she, the wife has, she's, I don't know, it's so many, I, I wouldn't even want to throw out a number, maybe a thousand Weebles or something, I don't know, it's a lot. And it's only vintage ones, so um, they're all in possession. We'll be, as I said, doing some more. I've got another button video. I've got a media mail video that's done. I've got a video on an eBay-related issue, something that they're doing that's costing you 20% uh, of your views in some cases. And we're going to show that out for you. I'm not saying it's something eBay is doing intentionally, but if you don't pay attention to the video I'm going to be putting up, you might miss out on potential. This could be part of the reason everybody is having certain issues in certain categories. Again, it's, it's a search issue with how eBay does something. I'm going to lay it all out for you. I can verify it. You can see it in person. It's not some fantasy thing I'll be showing you. You'll see it, and hopefully you'll change what you're doing based on that video because it's going to help you. It will increase your visibility, no doubt. So anyway, we'll, we'll touch on that one. Again, one more time, in, in uh, Patreon, there is a video up tonight. It's a long one, 40-plus minutes. Um, I wasn't sure if it would upload properly, but it is up. It's ready to roll. It's up right this second. Jilly, again, if you missed that earlier, I will send you a uh, the total on the shipping on that big box, um, and we'll go from there. Again, I hope everybody had a good evening. Hopefully, sales are going well. If you haven't hit the like button, you're enjoying it. I got 220 some odd people in here still, um, so please hit the like button if you do enjoy the conversation. I know I don't get to every uh, question here, but I do try to answer them start to finish the best I can. I don't try to blow off anybody's questions unless they're just screwy, but do appreciate it. Uh, stay tuned tomorrow. As I said, the Weebles video will be out, live show on Patreon. I may even put up a second video for those not interested in the Weebles tomorrow. I do, as I said, have that one coming out. Um, I was going to push it Saturday, but maybe I'll do the media mail Saturday and the um, way to help you increase yourself uh, tomorrow for eBay. I'll just have to play it by ear on my time but thank you all for coming on i appreciate everybody giving uh, feedback making comments you know hitting the like button the whole works and i hope you have a good evening